Hello YouTube, I'm Andrew Does Hair. You can find my work on Instagram at Andrew Does Hair. This is my client, Austin. He is a photographer and illustrator, all around interesting guy. And um, you know, every time he comes in for a haircut, he's, he's such a kind of a gear nerd. He always comes in and he brings these cool, rare lenses and cameras and things. And so today I get to have some fun and shoot with a camera that I don't usually shoot with. Now, Austin is growing his hair out long. He hit me up about a month ago saying, maybe I want to trim, but uh, I'm not sure. And so basically he was having good hair days and bad hair days. And so when he came in and sat down, I said, okay, on a good hair day, what is your hair doing for you? What's it saying? What's it acting like versus a bad hair day? And what he explained to me is on a good hair day, kind of based on his style here, you can kind of get this. It acted a lot like kind of like a 1980s hunk, you know, like sort of the Sam Elliott, Kurt Russell, or even Jeff Bridges kind of vibe. So certain days, his hair would just flow nicely to kind of do that look, but other days it wouldn't. It was just kind of a mop. And so this hair, this kind of haircut's actually been becoming pretty popular lately. I've been doing quite a bit of them, but there's a reason that his hair does this some days and not every day. If we pull it out and look at it, it's pretty much shapeless. You see, Austin's last haircut was with me about 10 months ago. And when we cut it, we cut it very short and basically round. It was like the shape of his head. We kind of did sort of a, a grown out buzz cut. And so if I pull up his hair here, you can see that the shape of his head is echoed by the shape of his haircut. So this is what happens if you just like buzz your head and then grow it out and never trim it. So what we're gonna do is preserve all the length we can at the front there and give him some shape. And for the particular desires that he has here, we're gonna give him a square shape. Anything that kind of comes up over this square shape dictated off of that length in the front, we're gonna trim it off. And so he came in with a very round haircut, like that red line there. He's gonna leave with a square haircut, like the green line. So I'm starting with a middle guide and just creating a square shape there. And then I'm gonna use that guide to square off the head from this axis as well. And so I'm gonna take sections on the right and then following on the left, using that center guide to help square everything out. The square shape, basically what it does is it, like if he wanted something different from his hair, if he said, hey, I kind of hate that it feels like a mullet, I want something tidier in the back, we would have gone with a different shape. But for what he likes from his hair, this shape's gonna work. And so by, by cutting his hair into sort of a square, we're gonna leave some weight in just the right places. It'll make the hair move a little bit more cohesively. And so just like we did on the top to square it out, we're gonna do the same thing on the sides here. I'm gonna leave most of the length, but I'm gonna take what was kind of round and shapeless, and I'm just gonna make it like a clean straight line, perpendicular to the floor, I'm, I'm gonna pull his hair parallel to the floor and cut the hair perpendicular to the floor all the way around here. And so what I'm doing is every new section I pick up, I'm holding the last section as a guide to help me cut the new section. And I'm just gonna work throughout the head, layering it in this way. You know, not everybody growing their hair out is gonna wanna go through the Kurt Russell phase, um, but it is kind of a vibe right now. Like a lot of people are asking for it, a lot of people are doing it. And this is just one way that I might go about making it happen. When he had his hair just kind of grown out and round, as I said, some days it worked, some days it didn't. And he explained to me that it took a lot of work for him to get it to curl where he wanted it to. And it took a lot of work for it to pile up where he wanted it to. And so the reason you wanna shape your hair up along the way, like the, the reason you would get this minor subtle shape up here is it's just gonna change the way the hair moves. And I'll show you that actually in a few minutes here after I blow dry it. But what I'm doing here is um, I, I had clipped up some of the hair from the top just so I had less hair to comb around while I was cutting the sides. And once I get the sides fully cut, I'm gonna drop the top down and make sure everything connects. On the top here, I actually probably barely have anything to cut, but I check it just in case. So now that the haircut is pretty much done, I can go ahead and blow dry it. And you'll see that while I'm rough drying with high heat and high power and wiggling the hair around by hand here, you can see that pretty naturally it's gonna kind of fall into that shape that we want. There's a little bit of weight on the sides. There's a little bit of weight over the occipital bone. And then his, his little curly mullet thing there is just like going crazy, going wild, flipping around. And so while I'm rough drying, I'm trying not to put too much tension on the hair. I want to see what his natural wave wants to do. And I'm not going to fight it to begin with. I'm going to kind of listen to it. And like, if it waves really nicely, maybe I'll keep it. If it doesn't wave nicely, then I'll know to straighten it out. But to begin with, I'm just kind of listening to the hair as much as telling it what to do as I'm drying it. So once the hair is dry, but not quite polished all the way, I'm gonna pick up a brush. Now, what I intended to pick up for this next job here, like I, I wanted to use a nine row brush, but I realized that I forgot to grab it from the other side of the salon. And so I ended up using this paddle brush because I didn't wanna stop the cameras to go grab a different brush. And so I, I guess ultimately what I mean by this is any brush should work. This technique that I'm doing with this brush is called leafing, I believe. And you kind of just take a small area of hair, you flip it around 
onto the brush and then you can focus the heat into the brush there to really smooth and polish the hair and it can help to coerce a little bit of bend in there. And what you'll see is where I'm using the brush to put more tension on the hair, it's gonna get a lot smoother, a lot straighter than the hair that I haven't really blow dried much. Now I didn't really blow dry that mullet zone much because I want it to curl and flip and move. Now here, let me take a minute to point out what this really simple square shape did for our haircut. If I were to take every hair on his head, as you just watched me do, and pull it straight out parallel to the floor and cut it to a square vertical line, what would happen is you look at this green line and it's longer than the red line. Now, what we know happens when you leave longer hair on top of shorter hair is something called graduation, which means when that green hair falls and bends and lays down, it's going to pile up on top of the red hair. And that's what actually creates this bump along the occipital bone here. And the same thing happens on the side of the head. The, that, that top corner of this square will push the silhouette of the haircut out and it'll it'll cause some shapeliness there. Now, if we look at the exact same cut that I just showed you a second ago, you can see that the red line is much shorter than the blue line. And what this is gonna cause, again, once everything is laying in its natural fall, that red line, when it hangs down, it's not going to put a whole bunch of weight onto the blue hair. And so that blue line hair, that's gonna be free to move and flip, and, and that's what's gonna give us all this action and movement at the bottom here. So this is layered because the hair below the occipital is longer than the hair above it. And so just by cutting a simple straight line, we have graduation above the, the widest part of the head and layering below. Now, with everything I pointed out here, you could imagine if all of these hairs were the exact same length as they were when he came in, we wouldn't have the same effect. Those hairs on top wouldn't pile up over the red hair um, beneath it. And those red hairs would pile up on top of the blue hairs and not allow them to curl and flip and move. And so it is this very simple little bit of shaping up the haircut that will cause the hair to more naturally and more easily flip and move in the way that he wants it to. And again, you know, I'm not saying anytime you want to trim up your hair while growing it out, you have to do a Kurt Russell. But if that's the goal, this is how you would do that. There are a million different shapes that we could use to cause the hair to act in different ways. But this is the one we went with today. And I freaking love it. Um, his hair, he, dude, he kind of reminds me of like a Disney prince from like the 80s or 90s. Like, like it, it looks a little bit like Eric from um, the original Little Mermaid or uh, what's the dude from Pocahontas? Like, like he's got that hair and, I, and I'm, I'm for it. I think it's so cool. So what you can see clearly now is I'm cleaning up the edges. I'm not trying to go like super duper faded up and stuff because that just doesn't fit this vibe. And to be completely honest, I didn't need to put any product in this. His hair looked cool without it. And my gut reaction because of that was to barely put any in. I was like, I'm going to barely put anything in here because he doesn't really need it. But then he actually has really coarse hair and a lot of hair. So at the last minute, I grabbed too much product. Um, but, you know, it's not completely detrimental. This is not the heaviest product. This is a little bit on the lighter side. And so I'm able to work it through here. And it just kind of makes the hair a little sticky, a little tacky. Um, and it gives me a bit of workability with it as I want to scrunch those curls and kind of zhuzh them up a little bit. <clears throat> and something you might have noticed or might not have noticed is I, I missed a blob in the front. If I was working in front of a mirror, I would have seen that blob immediately. But because I'm not working in front of a mirror, I had to go back here and correct my mistake. Dude, his eyes here, he looks a little bit like Ryan Reynolds, huh? Like a young Ryan Reynolds. That's weird. I've never seen that in him before. Anyways, so of his bag of cameras, the one that I decided to pick up today was a Fuji X-E4. I grabbed this Fuji because it is, it is the least like the camera that I regularly use. Like I'm a Canon full frame guy. So I wanted to grab the Fuji crop sensor and, and see what that was like. The lens that he has on here is an, a 35 millimeter F 1.4. So it's considerably wider than what I'm used to shooting with. I really like to work between 85 and 135 on a full frame sensor. And this 35 mil, millimeter lens on a crop sensor is gonna come in at roughly 56 millimeters. So I will be working on the wide side. But this is a very fun camera. It was so different from what I'm used to. It felt so tiny and nimble in my hand. And, you know, later on, as I got the files up on my computer, I was blown away. Um, this thing, I mean, I get it. I get why people love Fuji. So as I was getting to know his camera, he was getting ready to be on camera. He was getting ready for his uh, his close-up shot here. And dude, just look at the way he dresses. Look at like his vibe. Like he pulls this off and not, not a lot of people can. And I'm for it. I really honestly think in the next couple of years, we're going to start seeing a lot more of this kind of haircut. So a side note about Austin, he is very tall, like unusually tall. I'm six foot one. And typically when I shoot him, I can only kind of get up angles of him if we're standing. And so I started this shoot from down low. The reason being with a wider lens like this, if I shoot from above, his forehead's going to look too big. If I shoot from too far below, his jaw is going to look too big. That's kind of what a wide lens does for you is it, it'll stretch out features that are closer to the camera. And so I want to make it a point to try to shoot him from about straight on, about eye level, maybe a little above, maybe a little below. 
And, you know, throughout this shoot, I was shooting RAW and JPEG. I didn't fiddle with the different um, film simulations or whatever. I just left it on whatever he had it set on. But I really enjoyed the look of it. I think particularly I was I was kind of stoked on the way that this, these JPEGs handled the highlights. It was very smooth, very creamy. Uh, things that on my Canon, I'm used to kind of blowing out too quickly and easily, especially on my 5D. This thing just managed them. And then later on when I got the RAW files, I was pleasantly surprised to see how flexible they were. Now with this entire shoot here, um, I was shooting with the lens wide open. The reason being, you know, the us full frame fanboys, we tend to go, oh, crop sensor, that's gonna not gonna give me a shallow enough depth of field. And I just wanted to see for myself, like, is it enough? And I would say absolutely. Like at 35 F 1.4 on a crop sensor camera, I have way less depth of field than I absolutely need to have. Like you can see his left shoulder and these shots are falling out of focus. And, you know, to be completely honest, like I, I could be perfectly happy with this camera. It was it was a lot of fun to use. I really enjoyed the JPEGs out of it that that sort of cliche, I guess, about Fuji, like, oh, it looks like film. It's absolutely true. It like looking at these images, um, especially the JPEGs, totally reminded me of when I fell in love with my 5D classic for the reason that it does kind of look and feel like film. So now that I got a few like sterile white shots, I wanted to move the lighting around and shoot them in front of these bricks just so I could see a little bit of that bokeh from the lens and just see what a 35 1.4 could do on a crop sensor. I think this is the highest I've ever had to put my C-stand. This dude is like 6.5 or something. Um, I, I was worried it wasn't even gonna go high enough. I need to go get more sandbags. So I, I'm able to zhuzh up the mullet here and kind of fine tune his hairstyle. And here you can really see that shape we put in there, the um, the weight built up over the occipital and then the, the mullet just fluffing up down there. Like it, it looks freaking good. I have to admit too, like the um, the film emulation here was a little bit more extreme and heavy than what I'm used to seeing out of my Canon cameras. Like the picture styles in Canon are, are so mild compared to what I was getting. And so it made it really hard on the little screen to see whether or not I had a good exposure because the highlights and the shadows were just so like crunched up that um, I, I wasn't quite sure if my exposure was good. And so I really like slapped the exposure around there a lot. Um, I have to say too about this Fuji, like it has one little dial. And the first time I picked it up, I was like, this is not gonna be enough. How am I gonna move all of my exposure triangle around? But it's it's very intuitive, the apertures on your lens. And then the one wheel, if you click it in, it'll toggle between ISO or ISO and shutter speed. And so it, it ended up being pretty intuitive. After, after about 10 minutes of shooting with it, I was like, yeah, I could totally use this camera. It was weirdly small. I kept hitting the shutter by, button by accident because he has one of those like real proud, like tall wood shutter buttons there. But ultimately I loved working with this thing. I can't wait to do it again. And I had so much fun with it. So there we have it. Just a very, very subtle cleanup on a guy growing his hair out long and taking a pit stop along the way to sort of look like an 80s hunk. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you're into hair and makeovers and camera gear and this sort of nerdy thing that I'm really into here.